Hello, Popo. Come here. Come here. Oh, that's my girl. There you go. You like campfires too, don't you, Popo? Huh? You my girl, huh? Everybody says you're fat. I don't care. You ran 15 to 20 miles today on the farm. These a lot of health people don't run 15, 20 miles a day. You got them whooped, Popo. You gonna look at me, huh? Popo. Yeah, that's a good girl. Good afternoon, Head and Well Farmers. It is a wonderful December evening. I mean, it's about 50 degrees out here. And as you can see, I've been making some big progress on this tree. I have got it down to a little stump. <clears throat> and uh, I've made a lot of fires, a lot of little campfires out of that big giant log, but we're getting close to the end of it. I've chopped it up and busted it up by hand. and So I'm sitting out here meditating by the fire this evening. And I thought I might tell you a story. I haven't told you a hidden well story in a while. And uh, I thought it was kind of funny. It, it's a sad situation. It's a terrible, terribly sad situation. And, you know... And I understand the seriousness of it, so I don't. I, don't, I hope you don't get too offended. But uh, sometimes in those moments where you're the most intense and you're the most serious, you know that's when the funniest things happen. But here recently, I had an old couple that came into the office. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> euthanize their dog and that's not funny <laughs> i'm sorry it, the, the the dog was very sick very old very um in need of help to cross over the bridge and you know it was intense this couple had nurtured this dog for 17 and a half years this poor guy i mean he was just decrepit he was barely clinging to life and uh, they were so upset in their heart. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm laughing. I know what the punchline is, though. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> it was really intense. And, and you know, I always do a, a, a two-step euthanasia when it comes to dogs and cats and horses and stuff. I always put them under anesthesia. I give them a cocktail uh, shot in the muscle um, it puts them completely under anesthesia so that there's no pain there's no fear um, and it just and it just makes things so much easier for the couple and the family and the whole situation and, and most importantly the animal that's being euthanized <clears throat> and so <clears throat> this couple brought this pet to me and i'd already given it its first shot and these i mean they were boohooing and they were crying man my heart was just being ripped out for this people and i come to the part where i'm going to actually inject the euthanasia solution iv okay and i put the needle in i and i've explained to them the whole process i'm walking them through it which brings a lot of comfort to a lot of people and i'm walking through what i'm doing and I insert the needle, and just the very moment <laughs> that I start injecting <laughs> the euthanasia solution, the old man's phone begins to ring. Now, I, uh, I, I'll be 52 here in just a couple of days, and I can tell you, I can't hear like I used to. My wife complains about my hearing all the time. <clears throat> and... Uh, so, us older folks, we need a little help in the hearing department, <laughs> and that's called volume. And so, uh, we turn our phones all the way up. I mean, all the way up. 
And just as I'm injecting this euthanasia solution, this guy's phone in this little ring begins to ring. But it's not an old-fashioned ring, ring, ring. Oh, no, it's an iPhone. And he's got it sent <laughs> to Mariah Carey. And I will always love you. <laughs> to make the situation more intense, the old man was like hearing that song and he pulled his phone out and he's getting ready to mute it. But then the tears started coming down his face and he's like, that's so appropriate. <laughs> I mean, I know it's terrible, but I started laughing. <laughs> oh, you know, and I mean it with the bestest of heart. I mean, I really am not trying at all to to make this situation worse or to be uncompassionate. And thank goodness they, they didn't take it that way. As a matter of fact, he started laughing too. He said, that was kind of funny, although inappropriate, very funny. <laughs> and they, you know, we kind of got over that and uh, and we sent them on their way and everything turned out fine. <clears throat> but you know, there are some times in life, you just can't take yourself so serious. Um, even in really serious situations, I think... Uh, um, sometimes finding the, the humor in the situation that you're in is like, when we say that expression, can things really get any worse <laughs> than they do? We kind of laugh about it because we, you know, we're trying to, to relieve some of that stress. And, and I think that it's awesome to laugh. But I swear to goodness, I will never forget the look on my, <laughs> my assistant's face. <laughs> When that thing started going off, <clears throat> poor old Annie was sitting there with me. And she didn't know what to do. But when I started laughing, she just left me. She just, I've had enough. <laughs> oh, my goodness. God bless you, Hidden Well Farmers. I hope you have a very blessed day. I hope you have a great, great, great next few weeks building up to Christmas. God bless.